Scientists estimate that over 80% of Earth's oceans remain unexplored. Frankly, it's staggering that human beings have seen and know more about our own moon and closest planets than a landscape of our own. The world's oceans shape up as Earth's final frontier. Now, let us introduce you to the Midnight Zone. If you don't know it by name, you've almost certainly seen it while Attenborough's British RP lulls you into wonder on Blue Planet. It's the home of otherworldly creatures like the anglerfish, the vampire squid, and the fangtooth. The scientific classification, the bathypelagic zone, encompasses all ocean water between 1,000 meters and 4,000 meters, or roughly 3,200 feet and 13,000 feet respectively. Knowing this, the nickname makes complete sense. Due to the ocean's density, the bathypelagic zone lies in complete darkness. One of the most unique dive watches in the small pantheon of timepieces able to withstand the immense pressure of the midnight zone's depths is the Omega Seamaster Ploprof, formerly known as the Omega Seamaster 600. But when you consider that the current record for the deepest scuba dive is just over a thousand feet, why would Omega engineer a watch capable of withstanding the pressures of 1,200 meters, or 4,000 feet below the surface? Stick around, because in this special hands-on review, we're going to unpack that and more as we take a look at the Ploprof's latest edition, part of Omega's stunning 75th anniversary Seamaster Summer Blue collection. Let's dive right in. Knowing that human beings are extremely susceptible to the ocean's pressure due to the compression and decompression of air inside our bodies, and our commercial diving records don't even begin to touch the midnight zone's depths, why then would Omega choose to make a watch with that much water resistance if it has a relatively low chance of actual purpose-built use? In our opinion, that's just the wrong question. Why are folks so obsessed with the Speedmaster? It's not so much the practical use case, rather, it's the lore that draws us in. It's the cool factor. Being on the moon, experiencing the max speed of a hypercar, needing ballistic fabric for an EDC backpack, there's a laundry list of examples here. You can't deny that the Ploprof is the most unique looking watch in Omega's arsenal, the latest summer blue release also arguably being one of the most beautiful Ploprofs as well. It's a clear case study of form meets function, and this serious diver has some serious history. On the Ploprof Sharp monoblock case back, the engraving reads Seamaster since 1948. This is where the story begins. The Seamaster line was Omega's first family of watches nearly 100 years after their founding. Developed in tandem with an exponential increase of exploratory drilling by petroleum companies off the Gulf Coast, and loosely based off World War II era models Omega had developed for a military application just a few years prior. After launching a series of hyper-successful watches in the Seamaster family, Omega added another member at Baselworld in 1969, the Seamaster 600, quickly gaining the nickname Ploprof, short for Professional Diver in French. We'd butcher the French pronunciation, so forgive us for not trying. Let's take a close look at the case. In the ocean's midnight zone, the water pressure can reach up to 5,850 pounds per square inch. In order to visualize this magnitude, that's the pressure exerted on the surface of an object equal to the weight of a 1x1 one -one column weighing 5,850 pounds. This means that for the average size dive watch, which often falls between 39mm and 42mm, give or take, or 1.53 inches and 1.65 inches respectively, the watch's exposed front surface on the wrist would have to withstand a pressure force greater than 5,850 psi, or the equivalent of 2.65 tons worth of weight on the flat surface. No small feat. The Ploprof or Seamaster 600 at the time needed to be incredibly durable, far more rugged than what was being produced in Swiss watch making at the time, and it needed to pass the extreme seabed to Everest torture test Omega carried out on all their dive watches. The solution, a thick stainless steel monoblock case. If you're familiar with billet construction, it's essentially the same terminology for monoblock and watch speak. The main case was and continues to be one solid hunk of stainless steel, one piece. The idea is to give water as few points of potential entry as possible. The new Summer Blue Ploprof uses the same monoblock construction, only this time Omega uses a brand new high purity alloy they dub Omega Steel, maintaining 40-50% to 50 more strength and hardness than conventional marine grade stainless, devoid of any nickel and bolstered with extra nitrogen and manganese. The new steel makes the Ploprof pretty damn attractive to the eye. It's fully brushed with thin strips of polished chamfers, and it's highly bright thanks to the steel's refining process on the manufacturing side. Back in the 60s, they also needed to address the other highly susceptible component of any watch at depth, the crystal. Your average sapphire or mineral glass can literally pop off from the buildup of pressure, and it happens faster than you would think. To combat this, Omega literally screwed in the crystal as you would a solid case back. The modern crystal on the Summer Blue Ploprof has even more tricks up its sleeve. What you're looking at isn't actually real sapphire, but synthetic lab sapphire created using the flame fusion process. So, while it's not the actual mind element, it is, for all intents and purposes, real, and has the same Mohs hardness scale of 9 to 10. 
It also has a generous application of anti-reflective coating on both sides of the thick crystal. Much of the Ploprof's aesthetic happened by way of the bezel's right-aligned security pusher at the two, and the large, irregular left-side screw-down crown mechanism lending a staggering 55mm diameter. However, you get a very short, by way of proportions, 45mm lug-to-lug, -lug, but a predictably thick 15.5mm height. Omega left nothing to chance with the bezel. A timing discrepancy can be, and certainly was back in the 60s before computers, a life-threatening situation. Imagine the heart-pounding anxiety of settling in, adjusting the bezel, going about your business at depth, and then looking back at your wrist to see the original position aligned with a different marker than what you set an hour ago. Yikes. This is a 60-click bi-directional unit with a beautiful duotone light blue dark blue sapphire insert that has a degree of depth if examined closely. The darker shade hovering above the punch-outs reveal the lighter hue below, which are loomed. The pusher at the 2 o'clock is wrapped in a deep blue ceramic ring matching the bezel, the dial, and the thick rubber strap with a stainless steel cap, sporting three channels for grip. The pusher's wrapped in a deep blue ceramic ring matching the bezel, the dial, and the thick rubber strap with the stainless steel cap sporting three channels for grip. Simply push down on the security pusher and rotate the bezel. We'd suggest two hands for operation. The most iconic element of the Ploprof has to be the screw down crown apparatus on the left side of the case, classifying it as a destro diver. It looks a little intimidating, but it's surprisingly simple to operate and happens by way of some very precise machining. First, you're going to set your time by unscrewing the crown and pulling out just like any other unit until you see the orange gasket. Second, align the crown's Omega logo to the regular upright orientation, which will position the four negative channels of the crown with the four positive channels of the main case. Now, push in and screw down the neural grip. There you have it, one of the most secure crown guards you'll find on any diver. Then there's the helium escape valve on the right side of the case between the four and the five. Helium molecules are tiny, very tiny and have the propensity to slip by a watch's gaskets beneath the case back inside a diving belt at depth relatively easily. When divers were actually using these as purpose-built tools, having this escape valve was paramount during decomp. You probably won't catch too many sad divers using the Ploprof as an actual tool in the 2020s, but it does feature this extra safety precaution built in that the original did without. The very first Ploprof's monoblock case construction was enough for Omega engineers to forgo an HEV. Maybe it was a bit of hubris on their part, but Omega thought that if helium had no chance of infiltrating the case in the first place, an HEV was, in fact, a redundant component. ISO dive watch regulations require a watch of this depth magnitude to build in an HEV anyway, so there's a chance Omega felt compelled to add it even though it may not see use. There's an argument to be made that the Ploprof is the king of the sea, and Omega pleads this case by subtly incorporating Poseidon's profile engraved on the case back, along with the signature trident guiding a seahorse chariot, which is all framed by horizontal channels that also occupied the back of the very first Seamaster 600. If you're curious, each of the eight Seamaster releases also has the same design on the case back. If you run your fingers against the machining, they're tangibly sharp and they're there like the originals to hug the wrist or the wetsuit underwater. The entire Summer Blue collection uses a slightly different riff off a radiant light blue dark blue combo. All eight use the dial colorway with a few minor variations on the theme. As you can see, the dial is absolutely stunning with a notably metallic sunburst finish featuring a fine noise texture as it extends from the handset to the deep blue behind the minute track. Defining it would be best summed up as a sunburst fume hybrid. Omega unequivocally committed to the summer blue scheme of the Ploprof. The dial text above the 6 and below the 12 is light blue, so are all the markers, the tiny Swiss made smiling text, the loom inset within the plongeur style handset, and the seconds balance, even down to the glossy framing of the hour and the minute hands. Keep in mind that the Ploprof doesn't have a case back that screws off, so to access the dial or the movement that sits behind the dial, the whole crystal and bezel assembly needs to be removed in order to service anything inside. Here's our only gripe with the latest Ploprof, and gripe is a bit of an exaggeration. Perhaps it's more of a critical observation. The Superluminova is there, and it's there in spades, but the type inset within the large minute hand and the triangle pip faux imply pearl glow green instead of blue. It's fairly disrupting to the entire blue experience. Having this hand and the marker glow a different color than the rest of the elements may help a diver locate his time quicker, as opposed to them sharing the same glow shade as the rest of the loomed elements. But let's be honest. 99% of the folks purchasing this watch will not need to rely upon the loom for gauging the time at depth, let alone step into the water with it secured to the outside of a wetsuit in the first place. So maybe, just maybe, we would have liked to have seen the green swap for blue. Technology moves fast, and by the early 80s the Ploprof was already becoming outdated. Omega decided to stop production altogether in 79. 
That was until Basel World in 2009, reviving the design while making a few adjustments to the original, and again in 2017 with the titanium version, with the same movement packed into the summer blue ploprof, the no-date caliber 8912. The 8912 is a self-winding mechanical movement with a coaxial escapement, certified as a master chronometer and approved by Metis, with a free-sprung balance and a silicone balance spring, and it uses a bidirectional rotor to fill up the 60-hour power reserve. In addition to the Ploprof, you'll also find the 8912 in the Summer Blue Seamaster Planted Ocean Ultra Deep and the Seamaster 300 Master Chronometer. Even though you can't see the movement lowered into the monoblock case, it's dense with visual detail like arabesque Geneva waves and bright red embossing on the rotor. Although magnetic resistance isn't as important as water resistance for a diver, the Omega Ploprof has plenty of protection by way of the caliber's construction, up to 15,000 Gauss. In layman's terms, that's about the magnetic strength of your typical hospital MRI machine. So even for daily wear, you're more than protected. Practically speaking, the 8912 provides 60 hours of power reserve and decent accuracy by way of a 25,200 BPH beat rate, aided by 38 joules. The Ploprof has a current MSRP just above $14,000, and although the 24mm isoframe style rubber strap included on this one is about as thick and rugged as you'll find on any diver, you're certainly not paying for the strap as it's fairly standard despite its lengthy width. The assembly is really about as straightforward as they come, with a steel pin buckle, a branded strap loop reading Ploprof in light blue, and a long length that would comfortably wrap around the wrist when wearing a wetsuit, if you'll be using this as designed, or a shirt, which we'll speak to in just a second. The 2017 batch came with a titanium mesh bracelet, but Omega did decide to forego a metal bracelet option for this release, even though they do share the same lug width. We didn't have the opportunity to test if the old bracelet options for the last batch of Ploprofs fit the new Summer Blue model, but there's a decent chance of compatibility. Let's talk big picture. Omega's no stranger to reviving heritage models for updates. In fact, that's pretty much been a staple of their operation. So re-releasing the Ploprof isn't in and of itself unusual. What is special, however, is to look at the Ploprof as part of the larger Summer Blue collection. Omega didn't just randomly release a new Ploprof. They celebrated the whole Seamaster collection's anniversary with eight new models, each with the same Summer Blue theme. For watchmaking houses as large as Omega, to release an entire family of watches at one time with the same color is exceedingly rare, even to mark an anniversary. Since we're focused on the Ploprof today, we'll rein it back in. The question remains if you're serious about a serious dive watch, is the Ploprof the right choice? If you're on the fence, we bet we can guess your reservations if so. You're probably thinking, well, frankly, it looks massive and there's absolutely no way I'd be able to rock that on the wrist or even try it out in person to see if it would be a good fit. Well, take it from us. We were surprised to find out just how wearable the Ploprof turned out to be. Yes, there is no getting around the 55mm diameter, but the majority of this real estate is the left aligned crown assembly and that on the left side somehow balances the whole wearing experience. Plus, the really short 45mm lug-to-lug -lug goes a long way to lessen the perceived hept on the wrist. If you're also wondering how to approach styling this, as it does look intimidating at first glance, you'd be safe wearing it with a short sleeve shirt. But, if you want to level it up a notch, take a play out of Gianni Agnelli's playbook. The Italian industrialist had a penchant for style and secured the Ploprof to the outside of a long sleeve shirt, almost as you would when wearing a wetsuit kind of the terra firma street style equivalent, you could say. Anyway, we think the Summer Blue Ploprof, part of the 75th anniversary Seamaster collection, is a winner. There's little doubt fans of previous Ploprofs will love the stunning blue Sunburst Fume dial and the finishes, bright new steel, and the overall ocean-esque color scheme. So as always, we'd love to hear what you think of the new Omega Ploprof. Drop us a link below and we'll catch you next time.